So we are now on the third part of our discussion on the viral diseases of aquaculture. So we are now going to discuss about the infectious pancreatic necrosis or the IPN. For the etiological agent, infectious pancreatic necrosis or IPN is caused by infectious pancreatic necrosis virus, IPNV, which is an RNA virus. It belongs to the genus Aquaverna virus under the family Verna viridae. So the most frequently found in highly virulent strain of the IPNV is the SP serotype in, geno in genogroup number 5. For the host range of the IPN, so the clinical disease is important in farmed Atlantic salmon or the salmo salar and the rainbow trout or the oncorhynchus micis. So this one here, this diagram here is the Atlantic salmon, salmo salar, and this one here is the rainbow trout or the oncorhynchus micis. So the virus affects a wide range of marine and freshwater fish species. So this uh, table here uh, illustrates the different fish species that are likely to be severely affected by IPNV. So this includes uh, the different species of eels. We also have the cod, the halibut, and the salmon. For the epidemiology, IPNV is highly contagious and fish that survive the infection are presumed to become carriers. Asymptomatic carriers are at risk for introduction of disease to healthy stocks. And uh, we have the viral transmission you know, can occur horizontally and vertically. For the horizontal transmission, that is through uh, the, the virus will enter the fish through the gills or the GIT. And for the vertical transmission, that is the transmission of the virus via the eggs of the infected carrier broodstock. So the IPNV is shed in the feces, urine, the spawning fluids, and the external mucus. The outbreaks are most likely to occur when fish are stressed. So the different stressors that would likely increase the severity of the disease are the first feeding, high stocking densities, fluctuations in water temperature, and salinity and management practices requiring handling of fish. Outbreaks may occur at water temperatures as low as 4 degrees Celsius and as high as 18 degrees Celsius. So the disease can cause high mortalities up to 70% in young trout. The highest mortality rates occur in freshwater hatchery in fry less than 6 months of age. All age groups of the fish can be infected asymptomatically and may shed the virus. For the signs of the disease at the farm, tank, and pond level, so an important consideration with this disease is that the animals may show one or more of these signs, but the pathogen may still be present in the absence of any signs. So these are the signs that are described in uh, IPN in Salmonids. So there is a sudden and progressive increase in mortality at first feeding of the fry. There is also a cumulative mortality rates ranging from 10% to 90%. The fish may be found lying still on the bottom. The fish may be swimming with a spiraling corkscrew motion. For the gross pathological signs, so there is a long, thin, whitish trailing fecal cast, swollen abdomen, darkening of the body color, the gills are typically pale, there are also lesions and ulcers in the pancreas, esophagus, and the stomach, hemorrhages may also be present in ventral areas, including the ventral fins, and there is an abnormally pale spleen kidney, liver, and the heart of the fry. So we have here um, a figure showing the clinical signs of IPN. So these are all nonspecific. So there, there is ascites. There is a presence of exophthalmos. 
block body and an open gills. We also have here uh, in situ illustration of a fry that is infected with IPN. We also have here a fish at eight day post infection. So in here, you now we have a fish with pale liver. So this uh, particular uh, fish was infected with the SP group of the IPN virus. And we have here also the fish that is the, the negative control having a normal liver. For the microscopic pathological signs, so this include extensive and severe necrosis of the acinar pancreatic cells, focal or generalized necrosis of the liver, and sloughing of the intestinal mucosa with characteristic macnite cells in the lumen. So this include eosinophilic and hyaline epithelial cells. So we have here a diagram showing the pyloric seca in the pancreatic tissue of the rainbow trout infected with IPN, infectious pancreatic necrosis virus. So in letter A, we have here a severe necrotic uh, pancreatitis. So the arrows here indicate necrotic pancreatic acinar cells that is stained in uh, hematoxidin and eosin. For letter B, we have here uh, immunohistochemical staining showing the IPNV positive exocrine pancreatic acinar cells that are illustrated in a brownish red color. We also have here a histological sections from Oncorhynchus micis or rainbow trout. So letter A illustrates the acute necrosis in the pancreas as shown in the arrow in H and E stain. And we also have here a generalized necrosis in the intestine and the cells with nuclear pycnosis you know, and cariorexis as shown in this arrowhead. So the stain here is H and E. For the diagnosis, so the diagnosis would be based on the clinical signs gross and microscopic lesions. And for the confirmatory, we have the isolation in tissue culture and identification by ELISA, antibody neutralization or polymerase chain reaction. For the control and prevention, so any broodstock that originate from infected farms is recommended to be tested for the virus at the time of stripping and the eggs from the infected parents should be destroyed. Uh, the movement of the equipment from the infected sites should also be avoided and mortalities and waste should be regarded as highly infectious. So the virus, the IPNV, uh, IPN virus can be activated by disinfectants such as chlorine, formalin, iodine, ozone, and a high pH of 12. A provisional marketing authorization has been granted for a vaccine against IPN. To conclude, these are the prevention and control strategies that are recommended by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations or the FAO. So it is important to avoid first you know, the, the, those stocks that are infected or have the disease. It is also important to practice biosecurity in quarantine. It is also important to destroy the infected stocks. Disinfection of the water before discharge is also important. Monitoring of the wild populations, filtering the intake of the water, and it is also important to test the water with the most susceptible species. It is also important to rear stocks that are virus-free.